Uh, AJ Miller, what the fuck are you on? You've seriously lost it. <laughs> seriously lost it. Finished watching uh, all the latest videos in which uh, they pretty much laboured upon uh, the same points um, being hypocritical all the time it's like you you got you put other people down <laughs> hey you're being a hypocrite just by you guys putting people down having to get people putting people down putting people down it's hypocritical Right, so but the, the biggest thing that got me is the pain, the pain, the creation of my pain, the release of my pain. I'm in constant pain here, especially when I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> For about five years, I was then meditating eight hours every day. Getting rid of this pain, how long do you think it's going to take you? But then, okay, you know, I've got a life of 2,000 years. Right. <clears throat> Let me explain it. We sin, we do something bad, right? We're mean to someone. We feel bad. Right? And when you repent, you feel sorry for it. You feel okay. You feel better. Where's the pain? Pain comes in, physical pain comes in, when you completely, you know, all right, you create facades and you totally don't accept or recognize that you've done anything wrong. That's when you get physical pain. So if AJ's getting physical pain, hello mate, wake up and smell the roses. So, uh, I mean, I, I watched, uh, finished it last night, and uh, this morning I, I I laid in bed for a while, and and I've got up. I haven't had a cigarette yet. I haven't had a drink. I'm not in pain. I probably want one because it's my normal routine. I'm used to it. That's what I've been doing, you know, have a fag in the morning. And I do feel a little bit skitty. I think when I have a fag, it shuts everybody up and it's just me. It's a tool, tobacco is a tool. But anyway, <coughs> the pain, the, the pain, this. It's like added another thing, you know, and it is going to everyone, yeah, you don't feel your pain because you're so insensitive to it because you're so full of addictions. <clears throat> and then he makes a little comment that a kitchen, when you go and stay, when you go and stay there for a week, the kitchen is essential. Well, you know, not if you passed all your addictions, you could just have a... Uh, you know, a bowl of fruit on the table and eat that. Why is it essential to have a kitchen? Would you be angry if you didn't have a kitchen? <laughs> is an addiction food? Making food? Is that your addiction? Oh. I can't, you know, I can't quite grasp that he's managing that he would even attempt to to pull this out, you know. Well, you, you probably don't, because you might not have watched their videos, but... Well, if you haven't, then it's pointless you listening to this. But, yeah, so I just wanted to say that, that... You know, they've, they've gone and made it a whole lot more complicated. Adding in, you know, words like global, global terror, and uh, your, your... This, this pain that's you know, apparently is the biggest thing, you know, he's saying, according to God, your your pain is bigger than anything. Um, 
Yeah, so, you know, obviously I'm in denial of my pain, right? I'm able to deny it right out the window. He's fucking lost it. And the thing is, no one there questions him, ever. And they're all pandering to him. They're clapping his every word. To be honest, you know, if I'd paid to go there and listen to that, and then he spends two hours, well, so you've got a two-hour session, 15 minutes is like the nitty-gritty stuff, and then, and then the rest is just talking about crap. Or they do a group feedback and he spends nearly an hour and a half, I think, just speaking to one guy saying how drugs are bad. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking lost it. Seriously lost it. How can that, like a plant that grows out the ground, how can that be so bad? I don't think it is. God's, God's gift, right? Um, so I'm refuting you, AJ. You silly dweb. <laughs> if you're in pain, sort it out. It's probably because you're teaching the wrong shit. And you haven't accepted it yet. Maybe you're doing other things wrong. Maybe it's not your soulmate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been doing this thing, and I get, like, um, got it now, is a, a sort of a searing hot pain, it's coming into my feet, you know, and if you get a pain, you know, now this is far out, <laughs> I might as well make this into a, into a video, so this is what's been going on with me for quite a while, and my whole thing about, you know, um, being in the truth feels good. And and when you're, that's what I'm like when I haven't had a cigarette. <laughs> when, you're, uh, when you hit the truth, it feels good. And the heart doesn't lie, right? So if you're there feeling, so, so I got this pain, I didn't know what it was. Obviously, first of all, I thought it's oh, it's circulation, all the fags I've smoked over the years. Uh, but, it, you know, nothing happened with that. Then I started to think, well, maybe it's a gift. And I felt something in my heart. And I thought it's a gift of the world. And I felt something in my heart even more. And I've been doing that. And then I realised it's like people. And I feel something in my heart. And it's like death. And I'm turning death into life. And I felt something in my heart. So it was true. Right? <laughs> Right, so there's pain that coming into the sole of my feet. So I think that's kind of logical that if I was getting a pain in my leg or my side or my back, you know, sometimes I get in my back and it's to do with responsibility. I think I feel I, 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 I kind of get sensitive with my heart and I let the pain come into my heart and it kind of gets rid of it and it's quite cool. Um, what else have I been doing? What else did I want to talk about? Oh, I can't remember. I'll do another one later. Okay, bye. Now then, where to start? 
See, this is what, kind of why I wanted someone to challenge me because there's so many things to say, and um, you know it's hard to sort of like remember it all. Right. So first of all, I'll do a quick recap on um, what I've been doing. Okay, so I've been um, as your living Christ. I have been doing Corinthians 15.20. That is Corinthians number one. Sin, death, sin and death kind of together. Brought into the world by one man. And by one man sin shall be removed. Or death shall be made alive. And um, what we see is that Christians are kind of in a denial that um, um, by killing uh, Yeshua, um, by him dying, that saved the sin, saved the world from sin, which is untrue. Um, Yeshua may have been capable of taking away the sin, but not while he was dead. Once you're dead, you lose a certain power. You lo you lose something. So basically, they 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 killed him, and that, you know then they're in denial that, that that was a problem. And in fact, you know, oh yeah, you know, by dying he had to. Now I think what happened by him being killed was um, it kind of made him famous, made a made a martyr, and that way changed the world in that way. So, um, you know, God's plan was to, and also, you know, where's the, if if that did happen, you know, how come the world was still going into doing stupid, shitty things, and and lots of people um, um, having to live pretty hard and horrible life. So no, God's plan was to do this later, to do this now with the seventh Christ. Uh, the, the third Christ that's been able to make a temple to God and be at one with God. Uh, Yeshua was the first one to be able to do that. Uh, Francis was second. And, and now I'm the third. So this is what I've been doing. And uh, how I've been doing it? Well, it's been like a, um, a pain that was coming into the soles of my feet took me like nine months to work out that it wasn't just you know poor circulation and it was something from God and I've been refining that over the last few months and um, on Sunday the 9th of October really think something major happened because I was really determined to to sit through it you know and um, it felt like I got to this stage where it felt like every cell in my body was spinning around and vibrating and it was it was my whole body and still the pain was coming in the soles of my feet and then I've really had a I mean that might have been a that might have been a way of um, resistance by the way shaking is resistance I've done plenty of shaking and didn't you know feel much in the heart from it and I feel like it's a type of resistance so it could have been a type of resistance. But there have been many times when I've felt the pain and I've kind of allowed it, sort of received it into my heart and i felt this really loving thing in my heart. So that to me, you know, the heart doesn't lie. So that to me is is doing something when, you, when, you, when you're feeling it in the heart. Okay, so... You know, we proof of the pudding's in the eating, right? So we'll see. And I've had a couple of dreams where I've been going around to different people and kind of trying to suss out if something's changed. And I, I get the feeling it has. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I wanted to say about sort of other spiritual teachings, like, you know, the whole chakras thing, the whole seven chakras and, and the like the pinnacle of achievement apparently with some people is to open the 
pineal gland and your third eye and and everything, but they don't say about you know what happens after that. So I would uh, disagree with that. Now, back a few years ago, I'd heard about seven chakras and I was trying to feel them, and the, apparently the throat one was a bit at an angle and all this sort of stuff. I didn't really get anywhere with that, to be honest. <coughs> I'll just give you my journey over the last two years in terms of meditating spiritual feelings. So, first of all, like facade. Facade is in the face. So I, 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 I sat down and I allowed and my face started contorting and I could feel it was like an arrogant sort of and then there was you know there was other stuff there it was weird I've got it on film and once that passed because it's always moving you see it's all if as long as it's always moving not just staying the same then it's fine and when that passed and then then it kind of opened up some sort of emotion um, but basically what for me were the, the the first breakthrough was kind of getting in and feeling my heart so like I had the correct belief system that was that was essential truth is the foundation of love you, truth you've got to get the truth first uh, and and when you get the truth it kind of allays so many fears that you had so kind of you got that bit open then you had the humility bit here here in the throat and there was some stuff to feel I had like if I wanted to cough but I so I, I didn't cough, instead I just sort of allowed the feeling. Or even wanting to swallow as well, I had that one, and just allowed the feeling. And then, and then afterwards it doesn't, you don't get hung up about it anymore. But I touched onto that heart. I touched into my heart. And I thought I was done then. But what I didn't realise <laughs> was I was only like open to, if you like, one half of God at that point, the, 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 the male half. And I still had quite a lot of work to do with the female half of God, which comes from beneath. And I had all these emotions in here I hadn't felt. Had stuff about women. I still got a little smidge. There might be something left, but you've got to take into account. It's like if I think in sexual thoughts about someone who, say, walks past or something. Um, is that me? Or... Is it them? Because if someone's walking past thinking I'm so sexy, I want this man to look at me and want me, you know, then I'm gonna feel something, right? So anyway, so there was a lot of emotion there. And then sort of like your bottom area, sort of I'd say it's like your affection, like if you're you know, how much you you love God, your your connection to God is on the seat of your bum, where you can, we're always, if you like, connected to the floor, unless we're skydiving, but apart from that, we're connected to the floor, and we have a connection to God there. Um, and I, I've, I've been, you know, interested before how I could get uncomfortable, even though I was sitting on a comfortable chair. You could get uncomfortable, and, okay, so I don't sit on, straight on the hard floor, I do sit on a pillow. You know, some days I sit for eight hours, so, you know, um, I pre maybe I could do it on a hard floor, but anyway, I, I'm not a masochist, I just put a pillow down and sit on that, and I think that's fair enough. So that, I would say, you know, all this spiritual chakra stuff, here, this is the power, the heart is the power. So I'm in agreement with AJ Miller and not in agreement with um, some of the other spiritual guys who teach about opening chakras and that sort of new age. And I think they just read it in a book anyway. Um, so, so yeah, I, I actually feel like I've done a good deal of, of um, feeling... God basically has 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 um, had this plan that you know if a new Adam would sin, 
and I knew it would go deeper into to bad stuff and we'd go down like this and then we'd start coming up and um, once we got to a certain point yep, God's like, right, I feel like everybody on the planet now has um, has, uh, has realised, you know, that it's not good to be bad and um, now we can now we can take it away and, and and we can live and start enjoying, start being happy. So um, that's where we are. It, it's not easy trying to explain this stuff. I gotta admit, um, kind of yeah. I'm gonna stop. Okay, bye. <laughs> Hello again. Uh, moon and moods. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I had this idea. So our, our soul, if you like, has this sort of natural ebb and flow, ups and downs. And I'm pretty sure we've all got them on, on different timescales. Like we've got a wave that's every few days. And maybe something every few years. And I think they're, they're, they're personal ones. But I think we've got a... Um, like a, what do you call it? Like everybody. Everybody's got a, a wave. Let's call it a communal one. So I, and I reckon, so if we look, is that the right way up? So, and I think it goes with the moon. Now, so what I've done here is, um, so today at the moment, we're here in between the the full moon that we well we're pretty much on a full moon, and we're going to co go into the the going half moon, and at the going half moon, men will be at their peak, at their highest, and women will be at their lowest, and because everyone's got a soulmate of the opposite sex, you sort of you know we we we're here to look after each other in a way so. Just sort of remembering that when you're when we're at our peak in this two month, so every two months it'd be a peak, and then in two months it'd be another peak. Or if you're at your depth, in two months' time you'll be at your depth again. So the going moon, the going half moon, is when we're at our peak or our trough, and the. Come and the coming half moon is when when we cross, and the full moon and the new moon are in between. They're not anything else. Okay, so that was that. that. So that's what I reckon. Now the other thing I wanted to say about as I told you, it's difficult to remember all these things. Uh, so we've got something new I've come up with, like sincere in the head. Sensitive in the heart, surrender to all else. It's a good sort of meditation. It's for me. It's like the quickest way I can get in to my soul. Okay, that was it. Bye.